Hi, we're the Simple Teachers. Welcome to our channel. Today we're back in Whitney's classroom and we're excited to share with you some tips on organizing your phonics materials for both small group and whole group. So this is my phonics text for small group primarily. Sometimes I'll pull something out for tier one whole group instruction, but primarily these are my binders that I go to for small group instruction. So I'll just pull one out for you. This is an R controlled binder. And in this R controlled binder, I have a bunch of R controlled decodable text with phonics lessons. And these labels are actually in our reading A to Z pack. But we do have labels for free for you for just if you just want to label them generically. These, this is my phonics binder and we have all the sound spellings that you would typically be teaching with also the side binder labels. But let's go back to this R control binder. So in our reading A to Z pack, we have binder labels for you. So this is just saying books blank through the blank. But I was like, I don't want to make all new labels when I add all my other stuff. So I followed the Reading A to Z scope and sequence in here. And I just have what I use for my lessons. And I change this page according to the group I have. And on the back here, I'm really fancy. I write a little scope for the duration I know I'll have these students. So maybe I'm working with them for three weeks because it's a group that needs retaught are controlled so i just put my pacing right there with the text i'm using in the lesson and i just keep this in here but i remake it week to week then i have my text in little page protector so here's a reading a to z text barb sharp car i have my lesson right there and the text is just directly behind it so i again i'm just simple <laughs> I just have a sticky note labeling. Here's the section of AR spelling. And then the next sticky note is section for IR spelling. And I have the text that just follows that. And then OR and on and on. So that's what each of my binders look like inside. I keep any text I can find. I read it to check if it's worthwhile to keep. And I keep them in these page protectors. So that's a sneak peek of what the inside of my binders look like. If I wanted to take the time, I probably would update all of them to this label, but really it doesn't matter. I don't want to take the time. Okay. All right, let's take a peek in. Let's take a peek into your whole group um, organizing as awesome. well. Okay. All right, so this is my filing cabinet and these two drawers I use for my core reading programs, units and weeks. So I'll show you inside. <laughs> inside the drawer, I just have each unit and week has their own file. And it gets full of all the resources that I may need for that week. So I already have my phonics text right up in the front. So let me just pull those out. I've got two lessons for the phonics books that my reading program provides. So I'll need to go pull those and I show you, I'll show you how I store those because they come in six packs so I don't store them in here. Then my reading program had a phonics worksheet they called it where they, the students were to write in the spelling words we type them up into stories. So that's a great suggestion. If you have like a phonics workbook, you can type them up and make text out of them. So that's what these are. I'm gonna need to make copies, but I have my lessons and my text ready to go. And then here's another text option I have. This was actually from an old reading program. Here's my fancy lesson. And I just keep this copy for myself and the other copies are for students. All right, I'll show you where I get the reading program six pack phonics books. This is just a shelving system I have where I store some six-pack phonics books that my reading program provides. So here's the two lessons I need. On the lessons, I have the book number. So book one is what I'm looking for. I just go in order. Luckily, the books are slightly different colored, so it's easy to find. Yep, book one, ready to go. So here's my six-pack of books. And for whole group, I just show it under my document camera, but it's nice for the six pack because then I can use it in small group as well. 
So here's where I put my tier one text. If you wanna know how to plan for the week, we have some planning videos, go check those out. I'll put that in the description. But I've planned these texts to use this week. This is my Monday text. So here's what I use. I just get one of these, I don't even know what these are called. Angie, what are these called? Stackable, stackable paper bins. Paper bins. <laughs> so whatever these are called, I don't know, stackable paper filing organizer bins. I don't know, I've enjoyed them. Here's my Monday text and lesson. I go ahead and just put that. This is my Monday show. I just go in order. And this text I'll use again for Tuesday with the second lesson. So I'm gonna put that on my Tuesday show. And this will be my Wednesday text. They're short, so I'm gonna use two of them. So that's gonna be my Wednesday text. And then my Thursday text will be this one. And then for Friday, I had planned we're gonna do rereads and then a spelling test. So that's going to be how I organize my phonics. Now let's say I'm super prepared for this week and I'm ready to prepare my phonics lessons for the next week or any lesson for that matter. I have found that just printing off cardstock, putting next week on the bottom where it hangs out slightly has been such a helpful tip for me. So I already have some materials for my next week ready to go and then I don't have to have 10 stacks, I just, I just break it in half. So that works for me. However, I only teach reading. So I, this is only reading materials. So keep that in mind. If I had math materials, that might get a little crazy as well. But this is only reading materials. My co-teacher uses George. She teaches math, so that works out better for her. But I hope this is a helpful tip of maybe how you can store your phonics materials for the week.